Hello and welcome to part two of my PvE multiplayer series. Uh, today we are going to be looking at making a basic connection manager uh, for Enet, and then we will look at how to spawn in players for each peer that has joined the game. So the first thing I want to do is make a scene that will hold everything, including our world. So I'm going to make a new scene here, and this will be a node. And I'm going to call this game. I'm also going to save this in a new folder in my root directory called game. So save that there. And now I'm just going to drag our world into here. And then I'm going to come into this game folder, right click and set this as a main scene. So now this is the default scene that our game opens up to. So the first thing I want to do is set up a multiplayer over Enet. Again, in the future, we will get into Goto Steam, but for now, I want to get the game together and then we'll add Steam support later. So to get started here, we need some UI elements uh, for the connection manager. So I'm gonna make a new scene. This will be a uh, control node called uh, connection manager. And I'm going to save this under game and UI. And now in here, we will set up a basic user interface uh, for joining and leaving. To start, I'm going to just make a margin container. So we call title container. And in here, I will add a label. This will be called uh, connect to lobby. I'm going to make this font a little bit bigger by coming to label settings and then dropping down this font button and then setting the size to 32. Then I want to center this. So we'll select the title container, come to the top and set the anchor preset to center top. Then I want to be about 20 pixels down from the top. So I'm going to come to our title container, theme overrides, constants, margin top and set that to 20. Next, I'm going to add in a uh, another margin container, and this is going to hold all of our buttons and UI elements to join uh, a lobby. So to this, I will add a uh, VBox container, call this connection methods. Then to this, we will add a uh, panel container. I'm going to call this Enet. Then add a VBox container to this and a label. Uh, in this label, I'm going to put connect via Enet. Then I'm going to come back up to the VBox container and add a HBox container. This will be called join menu. Then we will add a line edit. This will be called host IP. Then another one for host port. And then finally, we'll add a button for joining. And then I'll set the text to join as well. Finally, under all of this, we will add a button for uh, host via Enet. And there we go. So we're basically set up. The last thing I want to do is center this. So to do that, I'm going to grab the margin container that holds all of this and set the uh, center anchor preset. But I would also like it to be a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is select the H center wide. That's a little bit too big. So let's come to our margin container, theme overrides, constants. And then on the left and right, we will put 250. Okay, now this is looking a little bit weird. Uh, so to fix that, we're going to come down to the join menu and then the host IP, I want to take up a little bit more space. So we can expand it on the horizontal alignment. I'm also just going to put uh, a loopback IP by default. That way we don't have to type this in every single time. So 127.0.0.1 will be a what's called a loopback IP. That's basically the IP of your system. A little bit weird, but that's just the way it works. So then I'm going to add 25565 as the port. We should be good to go. And we can go ahead and start setting up joining and hosting over Enet. So I'm going to come to the Enet panel container right here and add a new script. I'm going to call this Enet Connection Manager. 
we're going to give this a class name of enet connection manager. And then what we're going to do here is export a variable uh, called host IP. This will be of type line edit. And we'll export another variable for host port. Again, a line edit. And now what we can do is set these. So if we select enet and then on the right, we can set the host IP input field right here and then the port. Then back in our script, we need to make a peer. So I'm gonna make a new enet multiplayer peer. And now we need a couple of signals. Uh, the first one is for uh, hosting. So select the host enet button, node, pressed, and then connect it to the enet script. Then we're going to do the same for the join. And there we go. So I'm gonna start with handling hosting. So what we wanna do is create the server. So what we're gonna do here is say peer.create server. And I'm gonna do host port dot text. And now it's going to give us an error saying this should be an integer. So to do that, just wrap this in parentheses and put int before it. This will cast it to an integer. Next, all we have to do is say multiplayer dot multiplayer peer is equal to peer. And that is it for hosting over enet. But what about joining? Well, joining is pretty easy too. So all we have to do is peer.create client. And then this will be host ip.text, host port.text. And again, it's going to give us an error on the host port. Just cast that to an integer. Then just do multiplayer.multiplayer peer is equal to peer. So we can now join and create a server, but we're not really gonna see anything happen. All right, so to test this, what I'm gonna do is come into debug and customize run instances. Then in the top left corner, check this box and set this to two so that when we run the game, we now have two windows appearing so that we can test this. Now, the first issue is that we don't actually see this menu. So let's go back into the 2D tab and go into our game. Then all I have to do is just drag and drop this connection manager scene into here. And now it's displayed over top of everything. I am also going to delete the player out of the world since we will be spawning this in uh, through the script in a minute. All right, so if we run this now and I host on the left and join on the right, nothing appears to happen. Uh, but behind the scenes, we are connected. And to display some text when a peer connects, we're just going to do multiplayer dot peer connected dot connect. And then this will take in a function. I'm just going to do a Lambda function. And I'm going to just print out their peer ID to let us know that a player with this peer ID has connected. Now, if we run this, hosts on the left and join on the right, you can see 589 blah, blah, blah has connected. So we are successfully making the connection between the two instances of our game. The next step is to spawn in players for each um, peer that is connected. So the first thing I wanna do is decouple all of this logic. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that we want to be able to handle Steam and Enet in the least amount of code possible. So I'm gonna use signals and signal up the tree. That way we can handle logic that works on both Steam and Enet in one function. So basically what I'm gonna do is make a signal called server created and another one for server joined. From there, when we create a server, we want to emit this. So server created.emit and then do the same when we join. So server joined.emit. Now what we can do is when we come in here and add Steam functionality, we can have the same signals signal to the connection manager. So let's go ahead and make a new script on this. Call this uh, connection manager and create. I'm gonna give this a class name of connection manager. And I'm gonna make two signals. The first is hosting and a second for joining. I'm also going to export a variable, call this enet, and this will be our enet connection manager. 
Then in our ready function, we want to connect the ENET connection managers server created and joined functions to a handler in here. So I'm going to go ahead and call ENET dot server created dot connect host handler then do the same for uh, server joined we obviously need to make these functions next so function uh, host handler all this is going to do is just hosting dot emit then do the same for the join handler. And there we go. That finishes up our connection manager for now. Obviously we'll have a lot more in here uh, when we set up Steam. All right, so back in our game scene, one thing I forgot to do is make a canvas layer node, call this UI and move the connection manager under here. All right, so we now can host and join but what about spawning in players? Well, we have access to these hosting and joining signals, so let's attach that to our game. So I'm gonna make a script for a game, and then in here we will go ahead and just get this hosting signal for now. This is all going to change when we add in our lobby system, but for now this works. So what we wanna do now is um, when we're hosting, we want to set up uh, player spawning. So whenever someone joins our server, we need to make sure that we spawn in a player for them, and we also need a player for the host as well. Now, I like to do this a little bit differently now. In my previous series, I just kind of had it all managed in here, but I like to handle entity spawning in the world scene. So what we can do is attach a script to the world and give it a class name of world. And then what we can do now is export a variable for the player scene. This is gonna be a packed scene. And now we need to make a function to spawn in the player. So function spawn player. We're gonna take an authority peer ID. And what this is is basically what peer should have control over this player. And then in the future, we'll have a username here as well, but that's uh, for later. Next, we need to set up a multiplayer spawner. So uh, for now, to get rid of that error, I'm just gonna put pass. And then in a 2D tab, we can come to our world and add a new node. We're going to call this online entities, then add a uh, multiplayer spawner node. I'm gonna rename this to player spawner. Then in the inspector, come to spawn path and assign that to online entities. Then auto spawn list, add our uh, player scene to this as well. So the multiplayer spawner node basically just handles spawning in nodes over the network for us. It makes things a lot easier on our part, um, just because we don't have to handle all the edge cases. What if someone joins mid game? Well, this node handles that for you. So let's go ahead and set this up. So now the first thing, um, I'm going to override the default behavior of the multiplayer spawner. And to do this, I'm going to make a new function. I'm going to call this multiplayer spawner or MS for short player. And then this will take in a authority PRD similar to before. And this will return our player. Then all we have to do is just say player. So you go to player scene dot instantiate. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the player's name equal to the authority PRD. But obviously that's an integer, so we need to convert that to a string, like so. Then we just return the player. So in order for this to actually work, we need to get access to the multiplayer spawner. And then in our ready function, we just do player spawner dot spawn function is equal to ms player. So now in our spawn player function, we can just do player spawner dot spawn authority PRID. So basically the way this works is we call the player spawner dot spawn function. Then it's gonna come into our ms player function here, which returns a player. 
and it's going to run this on all the clients where this player node needs to be spawned in. So we now have the spawning set up. We need to actually trigger it at some point. So I'm going to come into our game scene and then in here we can just say multiplayer dot um, peer connected dot connect. So basically what we're saying here is every time a peer connects, we will go ahead and create a new player. So to do that, we first need access to our world node. So at onready var world, world is equal to dollar sign uh, world. Then in here, we just do world dot spawn player and then pass in our peer ID. And now that'll spawn in a player for each peer that connects to the server. However, we need a player for the server as well. So world dot spawn player one. So whenever uh, you know a peer connects to the game, they get a unique peer ID. Uh, the server's peer ID, however, will always be one. The last thing we need to do is come into our world scene and actually set this player spawner and give the player scene a value. So that'll be player.tscn. And now if we run this, um, we get another error here. Um, and that is because we forgot to set the enet variable here on the connection manager. So just assign this to enet, run this again, and we are now running. So if I host on the left, you can see I get a player. If I join on the right, they get a player as well, but we can control both of them. Now we will tackle that issue in the next episode. This one's getting a little bit lengthy. Um, but with that all said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, maybe found it useful. In the next episode, we will look at player movement, handling all that, as well as synchronization.